guys, it's Kathy Sancho and I am here for our second 10 in 10 and it is Wednesday, May hmm, 17th. Yay! <laughs> May 17th, which would be seven days after the last one. Awesome. Um, so I have tons of questions from you guys over the past week, so good job in sending them. Now we don't get to all of them, but I will get to most of them. Um, and some of them are really on point, especially because we've gotten such beautiful hot weather. Like it's 95 out now. So there's some good questions about how to make your dogs more comfortable in this type of weather. So without further ado, we will get to the first question. So I'm progressing in class, but not fast enough. Um, so I don't have enough time to train. And now the kids are going to be home from school. And I totally feel you. That's how I feel when I go to the gym. I'm not progressing fast enough. So there's a lot of things you could do. The first thing is make a training diary. Just set aside a minute after you train to write down what you worked on, where you were, and what you need to do next time. Because it's hard to organize all the things that you have to do. And I'm going to do a video on how to make a schedule, how to make a weekly schedule and a monthly schedule to keep all of this straight in your head. Because I know you think, I got a zillion things to train and I don't know what to train. I'm gonna help you. There's also an app called Decide Now, which I can't show you because my phone is using uh, itself to film me, but Decide Now is this awesome thing. Um, it's a little app, you know, I had it on my iPhone. You hit the button and it spins, right? And it stops like a wheel at like the Jersey Shore, right? When you're doing the um, chances, right? You wanna win big stuffed animal. But on this, you put all the exercises you wanna work on. And I broke mine down into recalls and manners and uh, social skills. And then when I don't know what to train, I pull that sucker out and I hit the button. And you know I'm a child and I love playing games. So it tells me what to work on. Now, of course, if you had something specific to work on, you could do that. But this is kind of fun and you can get the kids involved too because it's a game. The other thing you can do, come to class more often. If I don't see you every week, you're probably not making the progress you should. You can come more than once a week to class. You can come two times. You can come every day. Sometimes you can come and just sit and watch the other classes and you'll learn so much then too because you'll be like, oh, I see him. He's got the least wrong or, oh, that girl doesn't listen to what Kathy says. And you'll maybe pick up on more of the stuff that maybe you're missing when you're there in class managing your own dog. And of course, our fast track program, which is awesome. You leave the dog, we do the training, and we never tell. Like we have people in class who I see the person next to them say, wow, your dog is so much better today. And the person's like, oh yeah, I've been busting my butt training the dog. And we know the dog has been with us for three days over the past week. And we've been doing a lot of work with them, but we never tell because your secret is our secret. And what happens at training school stays in training school. So those are just the few things you can do to help yourself progress a little faster. All right, number two. My dog won't stay in a sit. She takes the treat and walks away. Now, I think your dog is in a pattern. I think you were training the dog and you'd say, sit, good dog, okay, and the dog goes, that's the deal. So we do use food a lot in the beginning and you're absolutely right to be using the treat, but let's try this. Instead of the one treat, maybe break it up into four pieces and tell your dog sit and then say, yes, what a good dog, and you're feeding and you're feeding and the dog is like, oh my God, I'm gonna sit here forever. That's how you get duration in a sit. It's like if you were sitting in a chair next to me and I gave you $10, you'd be like, okay, that's nice, Kathy Santo, but uh, that's not really gonna keep me here. But if I kept handing you $100 bills, you'd be here all day. I'd be gone and you'd be here waiting for me to come back and give you more money. So that's what we want the dog to think. The longer they stay, the better the prize, the more there is to get. So work on that and then eventually we fade all the food away, but that's another question. Okay. Number three, how demanding is it to take care of a new puppy and what's a reasonable amount of time for them to be in a crate? I feel your pain. Just coming off of puppyhood never is now 11 months. Um, it's a lot of time and effort to have a new puppy. And if you have like a new baby and then you get a new puppy, you're really gonna be in for it, which is why we have fast track and daycare and things like that so we can help you. But it is a lot of work. Now. Depends on your puppy. If you have a puppy who's like, oh, kumbaya, I just want to sleep and snuggle, that's an easy puppy. But if you have a demon puppy like I have, oh my gosh, you 24 seven is not enough. So it depends on the puppy you have. The rule of thumb for a crate is during the day, an hour for every month of age plus one up to like four or five months. Again, it depends on the puppy. And do not put that puppy in a crate for two hours after it just tanked up on water and ate a full meal and has not emptied itself because you will be so sad that you did. So I make my puppy tired and I've met all its needs and then you could put them in the crate. Of course at night it's longer because their body goes into sleep cycle and so they can stay in there a little bit longer. 
but it just depends on the puppy that you have. May you not have a demon puppy, but if you do, I am here for you. Next, my dog comes in from a walk and is thirsty, but he won't always drink. All right, we covered this outside at class today. So we had a lab, and the lab was like, yeah, I want water, but I'm more interested in my friends, and like we knew he had to have a drink. So in his water bowl, I showed him a little cookie, and I dropped it in. And that dog was bobbing for his cookie, like bobbing for apples, and he was inadvertently drinking the water because he was trying to get to the cookie. So that was an awesome, super easy way, and fun, right, because it was hilarious to watch, for him to get his water. Next up, my new puppy continually pees and poops on the floor. What can I do to help the puppy from pottying on the floor? Okay, that is like saying, when I drink this glass of water, my mouth is wet. Yes, that's what happens. Puppies pee and poop on the floor. You know this when you got into the whole puppy thing. So really, it's management. A puppy accident is a you problem. That means you weren't paying enough attention. Unless it's a UTI, then you can take it to the vet and have it checked out. But you've got to manage. My rule of thumb is every 30 minutes, I take that puppy out if they're out and about with me. And when they are out and about, I'm always watching them. So you gotta keep your eyes on it. By the way, we do have an awesome housebreaking sheet, which the next time you're at class, I can send to you. Okay, next, number six. My dog hates her gentle leader, what can I do? I feel your pain. My dog hated her gentle leader and her halty. So you know what I had to do? I had to order this little beauty from, yes, Australia or New Zealand or somewhere far, far away. And it took months to come in, but it is the solution to my particular dog's face shape for wearing this apparatus. So did she love it? Not right away, but she hated it less than the other one. So if you need a different kind of haltier gentle leader, this has lots of padding, it says nice elastic, send me an email or make a note in the comments and I'll send you the name of the company that I got it from. It is awesome and look at the cool color. That's so much cooler than black. Okay. Number seven, what's a good way to tell if a crate is too big or too small in the car? Well, if it's too big, it doesn't fit in your car. And if it's too small, your dog doesn't fit in the crate, no. So I like a crate in the car that is not super sized because I don't want my dog slamming around. So I'm not gonna put a tiny small dog in a big crate. I want something they can stand up and turn around in and be comfortable and safe. And if you need the manufacturer of some really good safe dog crates or a seatbelt, put an email and address in the comments below or I will just post the name if you ask. Mighty Might Dog Gear is one of my favorite places to get travel stuff from. They're really a great selection. What do I do if my dog gets bored of the food I feed him? Question number eight. You know what? That's a really challenging question because it's not like he needs a different meal every night or every morning. Um, he's just got to get used to the food. But if it's really not working for him, if he doesn't have good weight, if he's just not eating, there are things you can do. You might want to do a little bit of a mix-in. I know people are like, ah, I don't want to do that. But see, I put salmon oil or coconut oil in my dog's food, and I think they would eat mulch if I put it on it. So maybe you need to add a vitamin or something like that because they're really good for the coat too, uh, all those supplements. So things like that benefit your dogs nutritionally and also encourage them to eat. Now, my mother would give my dog tomato sauce on the food. It was Alpo though. I'm not condoning that, but you know what? Um, if it makes the dog eat, it made her feel better. It is what it is. So anyway, that's what I would suggest. Try salmon oil, try coconut oil in teeny tiny amounts. If you do too much, they're going to have a very loose stool and you're going to call me at two in the morning and I won't answer my phone. So there you go. Uh, number nine, tips for taking my dog out on a walk now that it's hotter. Yeah, it is a lot harder. Okay, first things first, pavement temp. You go out there, put your hand on the pavement. If you can't leave your hand on the pavement for more than five seconds, it is too hot to walk your dog, so keep them on the grass. Later in the evening and earlier in the day is better if it's really super hot. Um, and I spent 10 years, 10 long years, 10 dog years in Florida dealing with the heat because it's hot there all the time. Um, and I would always bring water and I would always bring a spray bottle because I didn't always have dogs who loved to drink. Like they'd need a drink and they'd be like, no, oh, I'm not really gonna have enough water. So I could mist in their mouth and I could also mist under their groin area. Now, that's a big tip. If you have a dog and you're putting water on the back of them to cool them off, you're basically steaming them like a wonton. They need to feel it underneath their body, not on top, especially with a dark dog. If your dog is dark colored and you put water on top of them, then they steam and the mist is coming off. It's not doing what you think. Also, really big tip, while your dog tonight is home and cool and chilling out, lift up their lips if they're okay with you handling and if they're not, come to class and we'll show you how. 
and take a picture of their gum because when dogs get dehydrated or they get sick, their gums get more pale. And if your dog was not acting right and collapsing and your vet says, are their gums pale? You'd say, how do I know? But if you had a picture on your phone, you'd be able to tell. So that is another great tip for when you're walking. All right, last question. In the summer, I have lots of kids coming over to my house to swim in my pool. Pool, really? I come swim in your pool too. Tell me where you live. Um, and sometimes I'm not sure if my dog likes the kids or not. How can I tell? I'm so glad you asked because we do a body language seminar every month. And this month, it is Wednesday, May 24th at 8 p.m. Don't bring your dog. Bring your family members. Bring your annoying neighbors who don't know what to do with their dogs. Bring your kids. Um, bring anybody who interacts with your dog, like maybe a babysitter or a housekeeper. And we will teach you and them how to know if the physical response your dog is giving to a situation is, yes, I'd like more, I'm not so sure, or please stop now or I'll have to do something that you definitely don't want me to do. So that is really gonna help you. And people come to body language classes, oh, three, four, ten times, because there's always something new to learn. We do demos with actual dogs, we do videos, we freeze frame videos and say, what do you think is gonna happen next? And sometimes you guess right and sometimes you guess wrong, but it is super, super educational. So anyway, if I didn't answer any of your questions, just know I'm going to get to them next week. If you need something else for us, come to class. We're going to help you. Call us up. Send us emails. We are happy to help you succeed. And now that we have the warmer weather, you're going to be out more. So our Friday videos that I know you love so much are going to focus more on people coming to your house, what to do on a walk, all those sorts of things. So look for it on the Facebook page, our Friday Weekend Challenge, so you too can follow along and get training. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day, and I will see you soon at the school. Bye-bye.